Yo, do you want to make arc thumbnails in Blender like this, or this, or this, or even this one here? Yes, this one right here we're going to be making in this video right now, and I'm going to show you how I go through every single step to making a 3D arc thumbnail like that. Now, first off, if you have not used the program Blender, I would recommend going to watch a tutorial on the basics of Blender because that is the program I will be using. There will be a download link in the description for everything you need within this tutorial. So also make sure to leave a like for this and if you would want me to do an updated one later on for when Arc 2 comes out, if Arc 2 allows me to do it, I will do one then as well. So first things first, you need to go into the link, uh, the description below and click on the link for the UE viewer or U model. It will open a page like this. You just want to quickly click down the um, Win32 version, click on that, it will download it. I've already done this before so... Um, already got it downloaded it's all ready to go so you want to go to your download folder so if I go ahead and open up my downloads um, here you'll notice there's the U model win32 version here you open that up and now you got that if you've got winzip uh, winrar use winrar when opening up zip files it's best thing to use it if you have not used it go search up winrar thanks now you have all this now you want to what am I gonna do with these files now you want to put these files in the directory of the game of Ark. So now if you want to find your directory of Ark, we want to open up a file explorer, right? You want to go into, so for me, and for the majority of people, it's probably on your C drive. So you're going to go in your Windows C drive here, go program files, x60, uh, bracket x86. Scroll down until you find Steam, go into Steam, go to Steam apps, common, Ark. And then as you can see, I've already got the U model files here so all you need to do is drag and drop all of this into this folder here and you're ready to go so now we want to export some models so today I'm exporting a Spino with its saddle I'm also exp exporting a female model with her flak armor and putting those together and we're also exporting a simple pistol for this thumbnail so there's three things we're going to be doing and then you get just because one thing is with the female we'll have here and that will use the tips I use on the hair for any dinos that have fur or feathers that will allow you to do those. All right. So first thing is you want to click on new model here. And when it comes up this, it will open up this little window here. So you want to go override game detection, go to Unreal Engine 4, and then scroll down here until you get up to Arc Survival Evolved. You want to click that. As you can see, you can use this for a plenty full of any Unreal Engine games to rip models off. So now we've got Arc Survival Evolved. Click OK, give it a little second, and it will open up a window here. Now we're in the package of the game files. So first things first, you wanna if you want to find dinos, you want to go into your content. The content section, the second part of the shooter game, you go to content, there's a lot here. Now, for dinos from certain maps, like Aberration, you want to go into the Aberration section or Extinction and all that kind of stuff. But if you're finding base dinos or dinos that were found on the island and added during the island period, you want to go to Primal Earth. And then Primal Earth, you want to go to dinos. So we're looking for the Spino. So we want to scroll down this list of dinos here till we find the Spino. So we want to click on the Spino. Um, as you can see, if we click on Spino, we go Spino Asset here. This is the old Spino. And we don't want the old Spino. So you want to click on Spino New. And then click on Spino underscore new asset, and that will be the new model of the asset. As you can notice, it is in grayscale in this window, which the textures come out in grayscale, and I'll show you guys how to texture it. I kind of already did this tutorial and had my re render uh, recording on my streaming quality, so it looked like dookie. So we're trying to do this real quick. Um, so what you want to do is now you want to have, have the click, have the Spino underscore new clicked, and then hit export. Now make sure to up here to save it to a folder that you can easily get to. I have mine in my actual thumbnails folder in an area called exports. And then all you gotta do is hit okay and it will export the dino. And now we also want to export the saddle. So we want the saddle new, hit on that, that one there, export that as well, just hit okay and boom, those are done. Now, if you wanna find a human model, you want to come out of the uh, dino section, scroll down within the primal earth, and you'll find the human model section here. Go, so if we're going for female, you click on female. And now, the same for the male, if you want the uh, model you want to use for 
any of your um, the female models or the male models for anything, you want to use the TPV version, so this version, because this version will give you the actual model, 3D model, while well, if you go F first person view model, it will only give you the arms, because that's what you see in first person, and... And then you got the beta and the alpha, which is just the implant differences there. So we're going to export the female third person view, export that. And then we also want to go, so in the female section, you can get the hair. So we want some hair for her, right? Um, and we're going to give her a ponytail, right? Should we go for a ponytail? What other ones could we go for? Mohawk. We can do the female mohawk. You can also do the uh, female Viking one as well, which is pretty sick. So, but we're just going to go with the basic ponytail, so we're just going to export that asset. We export that as well. And you also want to get the um, the facial default, which is like the default eyebrows. So you want to export that. So I'll see you have eyebrows, because it kind of looks weird without eyebrows. And that's the hair. Now when you go to outfits, you want, we want to have her decked out in flak, right? So we want flak gear. The flak gear is under the middle, and then we want to, see, now you got the shirt, the pants, the gloves, and the boots. So we want to export those. We're not doing the hat because we want her hair to be showing. You know what I mean? And boom, there we go. Now those are all exported. The last thing we want to export is a weapon. So most of the weapon exports are actually, if you scroll down in the actual Primal Earth folder, you'll find them as weapon and their weapon name. So the simple pistol is just weapon pistol. Now if you go to weapon pistol machine, that's like the fabricated pistol. If you um, click on the this one here and see that is the fabricated pistol. We're not dealing with that right now. We want this pistol. Now you can see there's multiple different versions of the model. There's a third, okay, you got the third person view, you got the SM view, and then you just got the plain asset. Now the plain asset one here, which is slightly bigger, the pistol.u asset, that's the one we want because it gives us the better look. We export that. And now we're done on new model for now. New model is done, dusted, and completed for this tutorial. So now we want to close that, close that, and we're done and dusted. Next thing, we want to open up Blender. So this is the next part. So we want to open up Blender, but you also, before we get into Blender and get really into everything we want to do over in Blender, I need you to go ahead and you need to go to the thing which is the PSK exporter. So what you want to do is when you get to this page, you have a page here, you go to the code and you want to download as a zip. And it will download as a zip folder. You don't need to open up the zip folder. You can just leave it as it is in there. And then come into Blender here now. And this is this will allow you to actually import those models. You want to go into Edit, Preferences, go to um, Add-ons, Install, go to your Downloads folder. You'll see the, um, and then you'll see the Blender 3D underscore import underscore PSK PSA master dot zip. You want to install the, click Install the Add-on. Um, I've already got it installed and then you want to search up here PSK and it should have this import to export import unreal skeleton mesh PSK blah 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 um, Thing and you want to check that sometimes it might not import. I'm using 2.91 of um, Blender which I recommend for if you want to do my lighting setup and stuff like that. So Next up we want to start by importing We'll start with the the spiner. So let's import the spiner. So if you hit the import, go to the PSK as we just did. Go to where you've had your exports. Go Primal Earth. You can go into your dinos. And let's scroll down to get the spino. Spino new, and we import that. And boom! Now we have the spino model. As you can see, he's a bit chunky. Well, he's a bit clunky. You know, he looks like he's kind of polygons and stuff like that. You got all the triangles. What you need to do is just click on the model, right click, shade smooth, and now he's all smooth. That's what you're going to do for every single model you install, you're going to do with that. So now that we've got him, I'm just going to save this file as Spino normal. So when I decide to actually use a normal Spino, and I recommend you doing this as well, because when you want to have, you want to have a save of the Spino without the saddle and one with the saddle, 
So now we want also want to import that saddle. So let's go up, go saddle new, import that, and that should land on top. Now the one thing you might notice is that they don't move together. You can move the saddle separately, and then you can move the thing. But you want it to move together. So to do that, the easiest thing you can do is you want to hit, click on the Spino saddle first, and then hit Control, and then click on the actual Spino, then come into your window, hit Control J, and then that joins it together, and now they move together. But, the, but we're not done there. The next thing you want to do is do the exact same thing. Click on the saddle first, and then click on the actual Spino, and this will... Uh, merge the actual models the actual meshes together then you want to hit control now the one thing I just noticed as you can see these spikes kind of come through the saddle <laughs> but you won't notice that in the render but I've just noticed that but yeah do the exact same thing so you click on the saddle first then the spino while holding shift in this area and then hit control J and that joins that together but now you gotta do the next thing now there's gonna be two sets of bones so and it's gonna get really annoying to um, sit there and pose it and move the bones around. So what you're gonna do is you go click on the bones, hit tab to go edit mode, click on the neck, click again, and you'll get the point zero zero one, which is the other um, bone set, which would have been from the actual rig. And then you wanna hit, what you wanna do is hit shift G, hit suffix, then hit X, bones. And that deletes those bones then you can hit tab now go into pose mode and you should be able to just whip this thing like around like a maniac like woo 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 yeah break his head kind of thing and now that is basically all ready to go and to be textured so that's that's how you put a dino you import it put all the um the saddle on and all that kind of stuff so the next thing you want to do is you want to go in the description below and download the arc shader blender file because you're gonna be new needing that to do all the, this texturing stuff. So first things first, once you've done that, you wanna hit append. You wanna go find where you've saved that. So I have mine saved in my shader section here. Click on the arc shader, go to no tree, where it says arc basic shader, you wanna append that. And now we can click on this and go over to the shading section. So first things first, you wanna click while you're in the shading section, or the, is hit news nodes. And this uh, principal BSDF, you wanna delete that, get rid of that. And then you want to search, hit, um, so then hit shift A. So you open up the search window, type in arc. So you find that arc basic shader, click the BSDF section to the surface. And now we're ready to get into texturing. Now you'll notice there's two slots, one for the saddle, one for the dino. So let's go hunting for those textures. So those textures are, will be in your export folder. So where you exported the dino, you'll find the textures there. So. I open up this one, which is my arc folder. We're gonna go into where mine are. Those are my actual thumbnail folders, so it's pretty use, uh, useful for me. We go exports. Um, go. So now we go to Primal Earth, Dinos, uh, Spino, Spino New, and then you get the textures thing. So I'm just gonna delete those quickly. Those thing. So now you get your texture files here. So your D texture here, the colorized D, is your diffuse texture. You will connect that straight to the fuse, and that gives you the basic texture, basically. Now, you can't just leave it at that. You want to also grab the end texture, which is your normal texture, and for every normal texture, go to the color space down here. You see it down here. This, click on that, make sure that's linear. Every time you put in a normal texture, that has to be linear. That's just the way it works. And now you've also got the L texture, which is the layered texture, sometimes it's called layered, sometimes it's called L, it's kind of weird. That same normal srgb color space only normal changes but for this you want to hit shift a go rgb in here go grab right uh grab that separate rgb node connect this to the image and then you want to grab the r to the specular g to the roughness and b to the metallic glossiness and now that is him textured but then you're like wait i want him colored so if you want to colorize him there's a little trick on and so you go back to that folder that has your textures, grab the D texture, double click on that. If you have Photoshop, this will instantly open up Photoshop for you. This is how I color, recolor all my data. Sometimes it's a little freaky and you gotta play around with it and can spend hours actually sitting there making sure the texture works perfectly. I'm gonna do this very basically. Now, now you've opened up the texture here. So this is what the actual texture map looks like as a file. 
So the next thing you want to grab is you want to go over here and grab that M texture. Now the M texture you never put in Blender because there's no point, but the M texture is the color map texture. So this will actually show you what regions can be colored are the same color. So the red is all the same color, the yellow is the same color, the green is the same color, the pink is the same color. Black is a color that never gets changed. So if you look at the black section, those textures area, that never will change on your dyno. That stuff you never, ever, ever want to paint over. So we use this map to um, actually map out or like kind of use as a selection for where we texture. So fun little thing, if you want to figure out the base colors of your dyno, go over to the actual arc.fandom.com. Here is the Spino ones, and you can find out all the regions and all the colors that it can possibly be in the wild. If you're doing this for like a mutated creature, you're just gonna have to take a screenshot of your creature and use the um, the pen, like the dropper tool to actually pick the color off the paint. All right, so the Spino has four regions. You got the region zero, one, four, and five. Region zero is the red region. Region one is the green region. Um, region 4 is yellow and region 5 is pink. So, I have an image of a dino here of a actual um, Spino and this is what I kind of want it to be colored like, right? I want them kind of like this. So secondly, we want to grab, so we can get the exact textures. I have actually took a screenshot of those Spino colors and I'm going to drag that in here and just make that bigger. Um, so I can actually get the exact colors that they use in game. It's a good little tip for you guys if you want to get the exact colors. And now we want to make a new layer and we're going to take, I know I normally name the layer correspondent to the actual color map section. So the red is what the red's going to be. And so, so now we're going to actually texture in the red section. So we want to go select color range and you want to click on the red, but you want to click on probably the not the pure red because see the one thing is you're not going to select every section so you're going to kind of find where it kind of merges in and find the best section so there that's probably going to give you the best selection now you hit make sure the fuzziness is 100 percent and then you kind of get the whole red section selected now as you notice there's going to be certain sections that do not paint that do not grab which is kind of annoying because you want the orange the orange kind of paints differently orange and red is pretty much the same it's like a mix of the yellow but all right so now we've got this we've got the red selection collected we want to go to the red layer you can hide that mask layer for the moment or the m layer go over here click on your color and then this we want that dark green right we want that dark green Click OK, hide that, and then you just want to paint in that texture. Fully paint that bad boy in. Make sure it's all painted in that selection. And now you've done that, you want to go over to the blending mode over here and click overlay. And then that's done. That is the red section painted, right? So now you hit Control D to get rid of the selection. Grab up the mask map again, make a new layer. And now let's do the lime green texture part so we grab the thing go select color range click on that green hit ok i don't really like that i want the darker green so we go into select color range now you just kind of kind of play with it and if you want like sometimes certain colors if you hold shift you can actually add more colors to the selection and so now that's kind of Oh, that, that will kind of do so now we want this is a sail and we want what color do we want for this we kind of want this color here right yeah that color would do select the color get rid of this and paint over top make sure you get every section sometimes as you can see when it's like greens like this it doesn't always do it so you might actually have to go in and fix that later I'm being very quick with this by the way Normally I'm very particular with that and you kind of want to be and make sure you get every selection done. But I'm just trying to make this tutorial as easy as possible. And not saying it, make sure to always use overlay and now we're done with the line. So now we want to make the next slot, which will be the yellow. So we go yellow, name that. Now we want to select the yellow. One thing with the yellow, I kind of, 
um, when you go select color range, go for the yellow, and then you want to get these bits where it's kind of like, like that. So you can see all the white will be the bits you select. Now if I hit OK, that will get all that yellow that we want. Now, the yellow on that dino, if we go look at that, is that pink. It's that pinky texture. As you can see, look, the pink comes through all here. It's that pink. So now we want to grab the pink, right? Now the pink is this one here. You can, you can kind of tell that's the pink texture, right? We want that pink texture. We want to hide this, hide that. And we want to paint that pink texture in. Just paint it all in. Hit overlay. And voila. We have now got, by right, control D, we've got it all pinked in. See? Pretty close to being done. Now we just got the last section, which is actually the last region of the dino. And then this, you can do this for every single dino, every item. The, the M texture will give you the color regions and you can find out what colors it regions match with what using the art fandom because some dinos don't have color regions and as well so you can kind of figure out all of that stuff using those two together so let's get this last selection done and as you can see I kind of want all of that I want all those little fizzle bits so it selects all of those uh, then we go over here now the pink section on this dino, if I go over here, it's like that kind of grunge, like a brownie color, right? It's like that brownie underbelly. So that I think is more, I think it's actually this texture here. Or it's more darker, or is it this? I think it's that one there. So when you use that color there, paint it in, same old, same old, paint, 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 paint. And then you want to go overlay. The thing is, if you want to make it darker like that, so you get that darker color, you use color burn, but I normally just use overlay. It does kind of, and we're done. So now that is now a colored dino. So what you want to do now is once you're done with that, you want to go export quick, export as PNG, name it whatever you want, hit save, and that will save to the same folder. And then you want to exit out of this, hit, make sure to save your, P, um, your PSD because you can always go back in and then alter those colors whenever you're retexturing or want to repaint. You always have those selections done so you're not redoing it every time. And then hit save. Okay, so now that we've done that, we want to grab that new texture that we just made. Drop that into the spino here. And then we want to get rid of that. Uh oh, no. It just had a hissy fit at me. And we want to click that one to the diffuse. And look, now he's all green and pink and has all these kind of colors. He looks kind of awesome now, right? He is now colored up. Now we've got to texture the saddle. So when you want to do the saddle, you want to go slot. Click on the slot one, go to the saddle, use nodes. Same, same. Do that. Add the arc shader. And once you've done the arc shader, you're going to do the exact same thing. Go into your files. And now you want... You, you will notice that you have saddle underscore new and then saddle. Your textures are under the saddle section, by the way. Now you'll notice this is in grayscale. You just, if you want to get them colored the exact, the actual way they're supposed to be colored, all you need to do is go in to Photoshop and edit them and stuff like that. I'm not going to do that right now because I'm just trying to show you everything in one go. Oh, okay. Now we want that layered and the end texture, right? And now we've got the end texture. Remember, end texture is always linear no matter what. And you have the layer texture uses, you want to use a separate RGB node. Um, and just put them into the specular roughness and the metallic. I'm pretty sure it's just actually the roughness and metallic is the layered uh, lower thing. And now that's done. That is a textured thing other than I haven't fixed the colors up on here, but I'm not bothering right now. And now you want to save that as Spino Saddle. Okay. So that is, now you've done your first dino. You've textured them, you've done them, you're good. Now you want to do a human. Now this is the fun part. This will take a little bit, this will probably take the bulk of it because we're putting on the armor and we're doing all that. And there's a lot of things you're going to do around that. So let's get into that now. 
All right, so now we're gonna get into this. You wanna go file, new, general. This just will make it easier. Delete all that. Um, quickly append. So if you haven't closed your Blender file and you're um, importing multiple characters, the texture, you can just hit append and you'll have your shader there instantly. And then we want to import PSK. Go back into the export, go primal F, go human. And then we'll get the female one and we'll grab the female one. Now she is ready to go. Remember, always shade smooth. Same old, same old. And now let's import all the armor as well. So we go in here, let's just import that. And we're just gonna do this real quick. Um, gloves. And the shirt. So now we've got the full armor there. You wanna also shade smooth every single section. Now you probably know this is a bit of an issue. The toes, like part of the meshes will start kind of peeking through the armor. Now I think this is just because the armor actually in the game, like literally the meshes bend depending on how you've designed your character and stuff like this and off the base it's kind of a bit janky. So the quickest way to fix that is you want to click on the female model, the actual base model, hit tab to go into edit mode. And then you want to select the areas like, like down here on the leg. We want to select those and we just want to grab this the movement tool and pull them in so it's behind there. Now this won't affect the actual, um, what's I'm going to call it? It won't affect the movement of the actual when you've got the armor on. This is only time you do this is with the armor. When you have armor on, majority of the time you will be wearing armor. Unless, please don't be strange with this shit, please. Alright, let's get the toes in as well make sure they are all in there and just, just have no texture like parts of the um, actual thing peeking through because that kind of sometimes happens so now we've got that I'm pretty sure that part of the leg is actually meant to show um, this bit isn't so you just want to grab the vertices kind of drag them in just so they're not, for some reason I can't, it's one bit. So one thing, if you get this issue when you can't see one bit, I can hide the, um, so this is in the pants. Hide the pants model, grab this, I think that needs to come in. Now I'll show you the pants model, cool. Sweet, okay. That's all we need to do there. Now we scroll up, see if there's any other, so there's bits peeking in here. You just kind of select the vertices, just drag it in. It's just like, you gotta do this just to make sure you can kind of have it cleaned up model. Um, everything like that. It kind of does happen. It happens with the male as well, so if you experiment the male texture, you'll get these same issues as well. Um, at the, I don't think it's as bad as the female, to be honest. But you just gotta quick, I'm just gonna quickly finish off all of this, fixing up these little holes here, and then we'll move on to texturing this. So some of it's pretty basic. Oh, see, that's where you make an issue. There we go. Okay, now we've fixed up all the little bits that are kind of cutting through on the armor. I think I've got every single section. Um, oh, the fingertips. <laughs> Never mind. All right, let me just know. Tips kind of close. And there we go, we've fixed up that, so you don't have to deal with any like of the skin texture peeking through. And now we just want to import the hair. Now the hair, you go into the hair section, import the ponytail, let's import that. That will import our member, always shade smooth. Everything you import, you want to shade, click that shade smooth option. Let's get those eyebrows on as well. Okay, cool. Now that is done, 
Now we need to actually merge it all together, like we did with the saddle and the spino, how we put them together so they merge together. And now this one is kind of, you want to start with the facial hair, then hit the ponytail, and then you go the boots, the gloves, the pants, the shirt, then the female. Then you hit, um, control J, oh, J. And then you want to do it in the exact same order. So, with the thing, facial hair, the actual hair, boots, the gloves, pants, shirt, the body. And then you want to go control J. And then we want to go into the bones and hit tab again. Do the same thing, we want to delete all the excess bones from me, us merging all these together. Go for about the neck, hit double click, hit shift G again. Go suffix, then hit X bones, and you just do it for every single set that you have there. So this is pretty, this is a long process. So I'm just gonna quickly do this, and I'll cut this out. And now that should all be done. You can hit tab again to get out. And now if you go into pose mode, it should be all yandy dandy. Look, we can twist her around and everything moves with the same bones. Cool. Now we need to go texture. Some of it's quite easy. Like the, um, the armor is exactly the same as you would have done with the dino and the saddle. Same textures. The human body has slightly different textures in the way it work. And I'm going to explain those quickly. So we'll go over the shading. Um, for that zoom in, I just press the full stop button on my um, number pad and that allows me to zoom in. So you want to hit use nodes, as always, hit that, get rid of the, um, the whole texture thing, and you want to go on your way about this. So, let's get our shader back in here. So, same thing, same thing, you want the arc shader connected in. And now we've got the skin. So the skin works slightly different. This is... So let's go get the texture for the skin quickly. Go to humans. Female. Base. So you got the colorization. This is only just will be for the actual body. So we want to connect that to the diffuse texture here. As we've done with everything else and everything. But then you also got the texture checker. So there's also an AO texture now for f the human body. And that connects to your ambient ambient section. So this is the ambient inclusion. That one you want to connect to there. That's kind of the only new one that you have. You also got the end texture. Same as last time. But you do not have a layered texture with when you're doing the humans. So the humans do not come with layered textures. They just come with a roughness texture. So the roughness texture or the R texture comes down and goes into the roughness section. And there you go. You've textured her skin which is pretty good. And now you want to go to the next slot, which is the head. Now, same thing, you want to do the um, actual, put in the, the shader, and then you want to go back into here, and you want to grab the face textures in this is over here. So the one thing you can do is if you want to, you can color the eye. Now you can do the exact same thing with the Photoshop thing, um, put the texture in there, Grab this texture, and now the color of the eye, the actual eye thing is that little green dot here, you can see down here, and then you put it on there. I've, because the base color of the eye is actually, if you look at it, it's kind of, it's that gray, right? So it's that gray texture. So if we wanted, let's say, I've done one here as well, which I did in the first time I tried to do this tutorial. Um, we grab it, put it in, and her eye is now green, right? Same thing you did with the um, recoloring the spino. So now this thing has the exact same things where it has the textures of it has a roughness and AO or ambient inclusion texture or AO texture. Also has the normal and the roughness texture which you need to put on all of it. Remember normal is always linear. I will emphasize that a lot because if you don't have it on linear it will look a little bit funky. And then you got the roughness texture. Right? And there you go. Now your face is done. Now the next slot is all the boots and uh, the armor. So remember how you textured the dino? It's the exact same thing. So I'm going to speed run this thing 
It's the exact, literally got the exact same shaders as doing the dino and the saddle and all that kind of stuff. So I'm just going to quickly run through this. Remember, uh, the one little thing is for any armor textures, they always go in the mail except for the underwear. Except for the underwear. Because the male underwear doesn't actually come with textures for some reason. And the female one does. Other than that, that's why. So, I'm going to quickly speed through and do all these, um, uh, the armor. Alrighty, now you can see I have textured all of the armor. Um, but looks at the boots. Um, are the boots right? Did I do the boots right? Ah, I made a mistake on the boots, so sometimes it happens. There we go. Now that's all correct. Okay, now it's time we do the hair. Now the hair, this, make sure to pay attention to this because any dinos that have fur or hair, well, fur or feathers, you'll be doing this to the actual texture that's under the fur or the hair. So let's go find the hair, female hair ponytail. So we want to use the node as always. Grab shift A, go up. Grab your arc shader again for this, connect it. So now when you click on the arc shader, you want to go over to hair, click material properties, scroll down to the setting section. You want to go blend mode. You want to have that on alpha hashed and the shadow mode on alpha hashed. Now this will make it look like hair. So now we want to go back into our, um, bring me over here. So we want to go back into, let's go into our female section. We'll go into the hair. Now we want the texture. So for some reason, the hair texture is exported here, but it also exports in the texture something. Um, but the hair texture you will find is the Atlas, hair Atlas D texture. So we want to uh, grab that. We want to grab that hair texture, grab that, put the D texture in. We also want to grab the air hatless, um, the thing, and the layer texture. So we want all those textures in here. But this, so now with the D texture selected, you want to collect the color to the diffuse. And then you can see there's all this black section, right? Now to get rid of the black section, you grab the alpha section of that, collect it to your alpha, and now it looks like hair. Right, now you've got the hair. Now you want to grab the end texture as the form, make sure it's in linear. Click that to there. And then you want to grab, let's grab the layered texture as well. RGB that up. Same old, same old. Like you've done with all the other ones, make sure the R goes to specular, G goes to there, and blue goes to metallic. Alright. Now you want to color, you kind of want to color there, so you want to change the hair to color. Um, you do not need to do this in Photoshop. You can do that straight, this straight in Blender. You go Shift A, hit search up color ramp. Put that in there. And now go over to the white color, change this. And then you can change this to whatever color you want. So let's say we want to give her some kind of more of a blondeish hair color. Now you can just play it like a dirty blonde like that. Kind of like that kind of color. And there you go. So you just go play around with it. If you want the saturation, on this one, like the brightness, so you can get like darker hair color. So if you want like black hair, like not pure black, but you want to actually look, have some sort of black like that. Because pure black does not work. It just looks silly. But we're, we're going to up the brightness up and then go for more of a blonde. Alright, so now we've done that. We go over to the next slot and you get the hair shell. Now the hair shell texture is exactly the same as the head texture. So you can skip texturing if you go over to this section here, 
hit this and go ahead and find the actual human female head colorized and use that as the actual material and then you're fine and now we go over the slot nine which is the um the uh eyebrow hair shell and remember it's the exact same thing as the um the face like the head texture and uses the exact same layout everything so you don't even have to retexture that just grab the head texture and you're done with that so now we go over to the actual facial hairs remember it use nodes this uses the exact same thing you want to have it on that alpha hashed so after we've put the shader in um let's go alpha hashed alpha hash there and there we go look at that all done dusted ready to go and now we want to grab the textures for this so we go into our hair texture again now the eyebrow texture is here you got the eyebrow texture and then you've got the normal eyebrow which is your eyebrow normal texture the eyebrow texture is kind of funky because it's like the female the male ones has the textures for the facial hair like the beard and the the actual hair hair well, the female, if you're just doing the eyebrows, it's, yeah, it's a bit weird. But you want to grab the eyebrow texture, put that to the diffuse. Remember, alpha goes to your alpha. This is for any fur, hair, um, feathers as well. You want to be doing this alpha hash thing. Uh, the normal, you want to go to linear. There. And now we're done. Now, you can, if you want them to stay gray, you can. But if you want to use a similar color to the hair, little trick you go, go to the hair file, grab that color ramp, hit control C. So you're basically copying and pasting it over here. And then make sure that goes there. And there you go. Now it's just got kind of brown eyebrows. Now the one thing with the um, as you notice, the the shell behind doesn't have the same color as that. So normally what you want to do is you kind of want to paint that in Photoshop for the texture. But that should be all good now we're done the female is now textured so i'm going to save her as a female flack so female flack and i'm just gonna save that file and then we're gonna now go ahead and texture the pistol the pistol is straightforward like it is literally as easy as you've seen for the other ones is the most easiest thing to do you want to go export prime wife Go to weapons, go to pistol, let's import this bad boy. Shade smooth that, now you want to append the basic shader. Go over the shading, go to news nodes, zoom in on that bad boy, hit thing, hit sh shift A, get that arc shader in there. It's seriously, and all you got is one texture set. There is one texture set for this, so we want to go to primal earth, weapon pistol, Car um, so the normal, and lay it is there, so we'll chuck those in there. And then we'll get the colorization and get the the D texture, the diffuse texture. And now we are done with textures for today. So now we want the, the diffuse texture to connect to the diffuse section, the normal texture to connect to the normal while using linear color space. And then we want the uh, layer to have the separate RGB. Connect that, oh God. Connect that to that, go, and make sure these go into the right holes, and boom, you're done. That is the simple pistol. Very much done and dusted. Now we can save that. And I will save that in my weapon sections as a simple pistol. Now that we've exported everything, we've got all our models that we want, now it's time to pose it up, put it together, and do the lighting. So we're going to cut to that very quickly. Alrighty, now let's get into posing our model. So what we want to do is we want to go where you saved your models. And you want to grab, let's say, uh, we want to grab that spinal saddle. You want to copy, make a copy of that blender file. So you're not, you always have a base one there to go off with. Now let's open up that spinal saddle one and go from here. Now, this guy looks pretty awesome. We want to go back to the layout mode. And now that we've got him in here, we want to get our female character in it and the simple pistol in it. So what you want to do is you want to go file append, go find the female flak, click on that, go to collection, hit collection, 
And now the female should be now. Now she is in this blender file. Now we also want to do that with the weapon. So let's go get the weapon, the uh, simple pistol collection. And now that's in here too. So that is over there. Cool. So now let's pose this all up. So if you want to, first things first, we want him, let's say we want him kind of standing out, clawing out, and we want to have the girl on top of the saddle shooting the pistol. So first off, you want to start by posing the dino. So you want to click on there, go pose mode, and now let's play around with him. So we, we kind of want it to come, which side do we want it? This side, right? So let's go, we grab, let's say the back. So that will spin it all. That back one will rotate the whole entire thing. So we don't want to touch that one unless you're moving it. So we want to start with back two. We kind of want him like he's like on his hind legs. He's up. And we want to rotate, play with him. Only whenever you're moving anything, only use the rotation tools. That allows you to rotate kind of thing. Let's move his head, have his head kind of up close. So he's like there. Now, if you want to open up the jaw, you want to find the actual, the bone that's called the jaw. Kind of rotate that around. Let's make it like his mouth is a bit open. Don't make it too janky. And then we want to move the tongue up a bit. Let's kind of have the tongue moving up there. So now we've kind of got him. We'll kind of have him a little bit up a bit more like that. Yeah. And now we want to move like his arm. So it's like, like have these twisted out a bit have him like, like he's clawing at something right so he's kind of you gotta play with the scapula a bit there and then we get the other one grab the scapula as well rotate that out have him kind of so it's kind of clawed in like that we're just you're just gonna play around, pose it in the pose you want. Try and make it look as realistic as possible, because that will sell the thumbnail. So now we want to kind of play with the back legs and kind of have this one rotated out a bit, and this one ro uh, that's the tail, and this one we kind of want that pushed back. So we kind of want him standing out. So he's got a wide stance. He's kind of. You just gonna really much play around with how it looks now certain parts will not show up in the final thumbnail because the one thing is i normally don't show feet unless i'm making the ground myself and stuff sometimes normally i try and have it like have the camera like that so now we've kind of posed him we kind of want that tail to come flare up the tail up a bit so we just play with the tail bones have that tail flare up like kind of like that so you can see that in the background and now we've got him posed up. So now you want to come out of pose mode. Let's grab the uh, actual female character and let's put her on the saddle. So we want to just use an object mode, get her kind of lined up quite easily. And then you kind of want to just make sure she is lined up with how that saddle is positioned. And then get her so she's kind of sitting on that spike and now we start to pose her up so now we want to go into pose mode and you start always start with the legs because the legs are you kind of want to rotate them out so it looks like she's sitting on it and then you want to bend these legs back up oh, i'm on the wrong side bend the leg back a bit so it's kind of like that you want to do this on both sides um Bend that leg back up and now she's sitting up and now we kind of want her to be kind of hunched over a little bit so she's kind of hunched over like that now the face kind of make her looking up she's looking a little bit up there and then we want one arm so the way we, we kind of want her to be aiming the pistol straight down here and then we kind of move the arm here. The other arm can be... So this is the one thing is we know... I know I want the camera here. So that other arm, I don't actually need to pose it. <laughs> this is a little cheeky trick. If you don't see it in the view or you're not know saying, you really don't need to waste your time posing it. You can skip through it. But if you want to be professional 
and then maybe take different angles you can always pose it up if you don't like the angle you want just so you're not sitting there posing it later going like oh i should i wish i posed it so i kind of want her arm to be just kind of like that uh we want to grab the scapula for this one clavicle drop it down so her hand's kind of on that railing down there all right so when you want to play around so if you want to say let's say we want to mouth the open you want to grab the jaw and you want to rotate that down so she's kind of like that so now with these now a lot of these ones unless it's the eyeball so if you let's grab let's see if i can find the eyeball texture it's kind of hard eyeball so the eyeball you want to use the rotation tool but the rest of them so like if i want to move the bottom eyelid you want to use the arrows this is the only one you want to actually use the arrows um so now you just go click click top eyelid it's a little bit chunky but yeah so you can play around with that move that around now the one thing is with these um you can't actually move the hair when you merge it all together, you cannot actually move the hair around. It, it, it's just stationary, which is kind of a bummer when merging with these mods because they don't actually have any bones for the hair because you kind of lose them all when you merge them all. So either that's one thing you kind of lose out having hair is that you kind of don't get to play around with it unless you like leave it separate, but that's just pain in the ass. So now, now that she is all posed up, but it's not really, we want to grab the pistol and line that pistol up. All right, so we want the pistol in her hand. So you just gotta play around, line it up, kind of have it like she's aiming it down, down thing at the person down there. You're just going to make it line up as perfectly as you possibly can and make it look as realistic as you can. So like she's actually holding it. So now that looks like she's holding it. That's kind of in her hand. She's going to play around with it. And now that's posed in. Now you want to go back to her and you want to grab that pose and you just want to move her things. Now fingers, in my opinion, are the bloody worst to pose. They are just absolutely annoying to pose um you kind of you're really just gonna sit there and bend and make it look realistic because just the way like they yeah they're pain in the ass but once you get it to work you kind of get it to work but, so you don't want it there so you're just gonna make it look as realistic as possible the thing is this is from a distance so in my opinion see as you can see now the skin starts to pop through with that finger, which is kind of annoying. But like, that's what kind of happens is that you either delete, so yeah, you can either delete the actual model underneath when you're adding them together, um, like delete all that thing. So now we want that, we want this finger to be on the trigger. So she's ready, ready to, to shoot this bad boy. And then the thumb, kind of just work that up there. All right, just trying to make it as perfect as you possibly can. And now you got that done. Now we want to add the camera. So next thing you want to do is you want to hit Shift A, add a camera. And now what you want to do is you kind of line up how you want the thumbnail to be, like the pose you want. And then you want to hit Control Alt Zero. And then, so one thing you want to drag this across, hit oh, and hit zero again there. And now I kind of want to move this back because first things first, the one way I do this is I grab the camera here, go to the camera options. I change the focal length to about a hundred because it just gives a slightly more lifelike section. And now we want to pull this back and you just want to play around how you want the camera to look angles and all that kind of stuff and just get it in the right position and i kind of want that back a bit more i want this back a bit more and i want it like that there we go all right 
So now that's posed in the way we... Oh, actually, maybe not. I kind of want to move it over this way a bit and change the rotation. Give me a second. Now you've done that, now you want to go like, okay, what else are they going to do? When, how are we going to render? How are we going to do lighting? Okay, so whenever you're doing outdoor lighting on Blender, if you're using, you want to render out in cycles. So cycles is what you definitely want to be rendering out with. Make sure your render thing here is on 300. You have your denoising on, on this. You want that all checked. And you also want your film transparent checked. So those are all the settings you want there. So when you're using cycles, if you're doing any outdoor lighting that's during the day, there's a thing they have called a sky texture, which is absolutely brilliant. So if you head over to the shading section, hit O on your keybind so you can get that. Then you want to go over here so you can kind of see, see how that's what it'll be if you render out. It's kind of dark, right? So you want to go to your world texture here, hit shift A, search up sky, and grab the sky texture and just click that in. And now you've got natural sunlight. So now I'm probably going to play around with this. But normally I drop the intensity down a bit to about 0.5, so it's not too hard. And then I rotate the sun a bit so I can get a bit of angle, get a bit of an elevation, not too much of elevation. So you go up like there, let's rotate it around. So it's kind of, so you can kind of play with the rotation, have it more like a side on, but well, you kind of want it like that. So we can have it like purely on, straight on, or you can have it on the side. So you can go get like a darker side, and then you kind of change the elevation. So if you, you if you have it low, it's kind of more like a sunsetty color, but if you have it real high, it's like kind of very very harsh lighting. So you're just gonna play around with it and get what you want, and then when you're done and you want it to render, you're just gonna hit F12. This is kind of probably be the laggiest mess you probably ever see. Um, so this is probably going to get really laggy. And I just noticed I've probably gone over to something I wouldn't have. Okay, give me a second. So once you've done playing, I've just hit two. And that's why it's switched scene. So worry about that. So once you've played around with it, you've played with the lighting, you've got it the way you want it. Now you want to render it. So what you want to do when you're rendering, you want to hit F12. So while this is rendering, I'm just going to move along and let it do its thing. And this render will take a while, boys. So the render is now done as you can see it's pretty sweet um but there's one thing if you want to add depth of field you can also do that oh, okay but this is the one thing i forgot that i forgot to add some depth of field to it which is what i normally do but it looks pretty sweet right now but normally in the camera settings on blender you can add depth of field and play around with it. i didn't actually put it on this one but we're done so when you're done rendering now you want to go file you want to save that and I normally save it to my render files, get rid of the compression, you don't want any compression. I'm just going to say tutorial toot um, render. So that's what I'm going to call it. I'm going to save that as, and now it's time we head over to Photoshop. But first, you're like, where's the background? Now, we can save this. I'll show you how I quickly, if I wanted to add depth field, you'd go into your layout, you click this, you go to your thing, and you want to add depth field. And normally you try and make it so, like, the actual eyes of your character are showing. And then you get like a very cool blurring effect, but I'm, I forgot to show you that. So other than that, that's another thing you can add just to give you some more depth and it makes the image look even better. So I'm, I'm going to quickly render that one out so I can actually use that. Whoopsies. See you guys in a second. Alrighty. So that render's done. Same as last time. I'm just going to quickly save that. Okay. Alrighty, now that we're done on Blender, so I'm going to close Blender and we're going to save that. We're going to open up Photoshop, but, but you're wondering, what about the background? Now the background itself, what I do do 
is that um, normally I go onto Arc and I go ahead and take a snapshot using the Nvidia Anzel, a super resolution, resolution um, snapshot using the Nvidia Anzel. But you can use any kind of like snapshot you're taking from a game and using the background. I'm just going to quickly open up my. This is how. Well, this thumbnail here you've probably already seen from my actual um, Alpha Rex video, which got delayed a day because. Um, I think I stuffed up the rendering with DaVinci Resolve or something. Something just broke and it's all pixelated. So we're gonna get rid of, let's just get rid of everything here. Let's clear it out. Um, alrighty. So I'm not gonna use that layer. So now you got like an open, you want a 1080p by, um, well, a 1080p document here for your photo, like any kind of normal thumbnail design. You wanna grab that render that you have. So I add some my render folders. Uh, it is the what is it? The tutorial render, toot render. There it is. Your tutorial render. Now the one thing is, what I always do before I even put a background in is I will go into the effect section here, the filter section, and I go to the camera raw filter section, right? So I always like to play around and adapt the way it looks. So I like to add a bit more clarity, a bit more contrast. Um, I do like to drop the whites down a bit and the expo just to kind of and up the saturation So it's a little bit more saturated and so it kind of pops a bit more So that just gives it a little bit of pop and now if you got any screenshot from in the background of the game I don't make the backdrops unless it's for certain renders where I do Which I have done for a couple where I've added some foreground renders or some objects where I pull from the game like rocks or something Add on top, but normally my backgrounds are from screenshots from in the game And if you need to find a way just look how to do that um, but I'm gonna grab one of my past screenshots. Um, do I have one? Let's grab this one. Let's chuck that behind it. And then you just gotta play around with it, scale it up, scale it down, make sure it kind of looks as realistic as possible, gives you the right angle. And do the exact same thing as I did with the other one. You go to the camera raw filter here. Um, up the clarity, up the contrast a bit, make it a bit more saturated, a bit more vibrant, make it do that blue, and boom. Now that's pop, and there you go. That is a completed thumbnail using Blender and Photoshop and everything with that. And that is the thumbnail. So what you gotta do is you just wanna export that, go export as. I normally have it on about 75% of the size of a 1080p file, so it gives it the right thing. Export this, let's go my same photos, and this will be my tutorial uh, thumbnail. So that is the tutorial thumbnail. That's all you need. That is done. You're done. So for me, I'll probably add on my little, for, I have my little rectangles on, like how I did that. Add my logo. Also add the Arc Survival Bar logo, and that's a Vino logo. And there you go. So I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'll see you guys in my next upload. And yeah, peace out.